Hello everybody, today I'm going to be talking about using DigiSign with web forms. Before I start though, I really want to stress the importance of trying to transition away from web forms and starting to use SkySlope forms, as SkySlope forms definitely integrates a lot better with DigiSign, and down the road it'll make your life a lot easier just using DigiSign and SkySlope forms together. Also, DigiSign and SkySlope forms is something that we provide to you at Century 21 Heritage Group, so we're not relying on an association like TREB or Korea to provide this to you. And as we've seen, TREB or Korea or any other association can pull a technology platform with very short notice. So you can have the confidence that DigiSign and SkySlope will be supported by our brokerage for the long term. However, I understand a lot of you are comfortable with web forms. And now that DigiSign is a preferred platform for many boards, including TREB, I'm gonna go over how to take your forms from web forms, put them into DigiSign and send them off for signature. If you're interested on in learning more about SkySlope and how it integrates with DigiSign, please check out our other video on the channel about SkySlope and DigiSign. SkySlope forms 100% is worth learning. It's supported at our brokerage and it will be going forward. So it's important to put the time and the investment into that platform to learning it and how it integrates with DigiSign. All right, that being said, let's get started here. I'm going to start first by jumping into web forms. Okay, I'm not going to show this isn't a seminar on web forms. I've already got a form filled out here. I've got a few forms that I fill pre filled out. But one thing I want to show you is instead of sending this off to AuthentiSign, which a lot of you would be familiar with, instead, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be saving all your forms as PDFs. Okay, so the first thing you want to do after you're done filling out your form, save, save as PDF, and make sure you save it to your computer. Okay, so now that you've got your forms downloaded, any and all the forms that you want to use and send out for signature. The next thing you need to do is get into DigiSign. So there are a few ways that you can log in to DigiSign. If you're a member of the Toronto Real Estate Board, SkySlope DigiSign is made available to all of its members. So they've got some quick hot links to click on to get to SkySlope DigiSign. The thing to keep out for an eye out for is often it's just called SkySlope Forms to get into DigiSign. So on the main page here on TorontoMLS.net that I'm sure you're all familiar with, there's a SkySlope Forms button right here. If you click on that, that will get you into SkySlope's platform where SkySlope DigiSign is, and it'll automatically lock you in. You can also get to it from any listing as well, be it Stratus, Realm, matrix as long as you're on the Toronto real estate board or any other board that support that is providing sky slope you will notice there will be a sky slope forms button somewhere on the listing usually near the top again it depends on the platform this year's realm but you'll also be able to find it on matrix or stratus and again it's called sky slope forms although that is actually going to be where you go in to get into digisign so click on any of those it'll automatically log you in However, if you're not a member of TREB or you just want to log in on the generic skyslope.com webpage, you can do that too. Okay. You just go to skyslope.com. There's a login button in the top right. You click on Skyslope Forms and it'll take you to a login screen. You put in your email. I'll put in mine here. Click on Next and it'll ask you for your password. If you don't know your password, maybe this is your first time logging in, you can just click on forgot password. You put in your email up here. And you click the submit button. Okay, if for whatever reason, this says this email is not found, it's likely because maybe we've got a different email on file for you. I know a lot of agents tend to use different email addresses, maybe using your Century 21 one, maybe using a Gmail address. Just check with your front desk, your manager, to see what uh, email account we have on file with SkySlope to help you out there. So once you log in, depending on how you log in, you'll be taken to a different screen. Now where you want to go is you want to look in the top right here, there's a little apps button. Okay. 
Okay. You want to click on that. You want to go to DigiSign. You may start here in Skyslope Transactions. You may start in here, which is called Skyslope Forms. But since you're just using DigiSign, that's all you care about today. And again, I, I definitely stress learning about Skyslope Forms. But we're just going to go into DigiSign because we're taking all of our stuff from Web Forms and we're bringing it here into DigiSign. The first thing you'll see is a list of all of the envelopes that you've created. This list may not have any, it's your first time logging in, but what this list is of, an envelope is a package of forms that you've prepared to send to a client for signature. Right? So the envelope is like you're stuffing the envelope full of forms ready to be completed for signing and you're sending them along. That's how the terminology works here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create an envelope create it from scratch. You can select choose property or no property. Now because we're just bringing something in from web forms, it's likely that you don't have a property here. Again, this is where Skyslope DigiSign links in with Skyslope forms. Choosing a property would be choosing something that we've already inputted into Skyslope. But since we're bringing in from web forms, you'd select no property. First thing it says is, okay, select your documents to upload. So you can either drag them in here, or I'm going to click on the Upload Documents button, and it'll say, where do you, what documents do you want to bring in? I want to bring in these three documents here that I downloaded from Web Forms, like I showed you how I did before. Okay, it down, brings them all in. It says a little check mark saying we're okay here, and we'll click on Next. Next thing it asks is who are gonna be your signatories. So it starts with me, I'm the signatory, right? I need to sign. I'm gonna add a new recipient. I put in Matt Damon. I like that it was trying to autofill it there. Okay, we'll, we'll fill it in Matt Damon. And I'm gonna put the email address as me so we can avoid sending Matt emails. He needs to sign. Okay, so I'll save that there. Who needs to sign first? We'll put Matt Damon to put that automatically. I'm gonna put a little check mark next to me so I'm in the signing here as well. You can add more recipients if you like, as many as you'd like. Maybe you have two buyers. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm gonna show you also is here on the right, you can actually change the signing order. So let's say I wanted to make sure I signed before Matt did. I can add a signer group. I can take Matt and I can put in a second signer group. So I will sign first. Once I'm done signing, it'll automatically send it to Matt. However, there's another thing you can also do. You can also just put yourself, if you don't have to do any signatures, into a received a copy of signed documents. But so once everyone's done signing, I'll receive a copy. You can add an extra person in there if maybe you just want to send an extra copy to, I don't know, another another co-listing agent or something. You can toss them in the bottom. But since we're both going to be signing, I'm going to put myself here in the same signing group as Matt. Click on Next. And it brings me into the Preparing for Signature screen. Right. You'll notice that I've got here on the left a list of the documents that I uploaded. I uploaded a confirmation of cooperation, a working with a realtor form, and an APS. One of the neat things about DigiSign is you can start in the first one. You can just scroll down, and it'll actually take you from there was the confirmation co-op, working with a realtor, APS. It's all nice and linear. Or you can click on the left to quickly jump between agreements. Next part on the left here, you'll see that it shows you the recipients. These are the recipients we had before. But hey, you know what? If you forgot to add somebody, you can just click on that little three dots there. Edit recipients. Brings you back to the screen that I showed you earlier. You can change the signing groups. You can add more recipients, whatever you'd like to do. One thing that's pretty important that you're going to want to change is this outgoing email section. Click on the three dots and click on edit message. Right here, this subject line is going to be the name of your envelope. It's not apparently obvious <laughs> that that's what that does, but you want to make sure that you change this so that you don't just have a whole bunch of envelopes called you have documents to sign, right? That would be a nightmare trying to sort through, trying to figure out where your APS was for a specific listing. So I'm going to put the listing address here, one tragically hip away. Whoops, my typing is horrible today. APS, and then I'm going to put the date just to kind of keep it easy. And you know what? I'll put the time as well. 
9.30 a.m., just in case there's some sign backs and such. The other thing to remember, though, this is also the email subject line that all your recipients are going to see as well when it's sent to them for signature. Okay? So plan accordingly when you put your email subject line. You may want to put an email message to your client too, but likely they know this is coming. So I'll click Save, and then you'll notice this on the left here has changed to reflect those changes. Okay. So what else do we have on the screen? Along the top, we've got the signers. Me, Linus Gilius, and Matt Damon. You can flip back and forth between whichever signer you want to start adding things for. There's signatures, initials, name, date, time, checkbox, text field, and strike throughs. I'll go over what each of these are individually. So let's start prepping this for signature. All right. So first off, I'll need to add some initials. So if I click on the initials block at the top, I can plop them down wherever I want just by clicking on the spot, resizing the initials like that. All right. So I'm going to go through. There's, uh, well, actually, that's the only place I need to put the initials here. But I'm going to put the initials in for the buyer here as well. Click there. You'll notice that it defaults to putting my initials in here. That's because the signer group on the top left is still on me. Whenever I add something, it's always going to add by default whoever this is assigned to in the top left in the drop down. However, you can change it on the fly because they get, they put this little handy floating tool around whenever you add an element. So you can change it to whoever you want on the fly. That being said, if I add more initials, it's going to keep adding me. Right? So if I wanted to add Matt instead, I just switch this over to Matt. There we go. So now anything I add is going to be attached to Matt. So they color code it, these signing blocks, initial blocks, whatever you want to call them, just for clarity of use and just for visual aesthetics. All right, so I'm going to add some, a signature block here for Matt. Oops. Resize it. You can add a date as well, just by clicking on the date along the top. If you wanted a date with a time, you click on the time block, and you'll notice it does the date along with the time, but we don't need that here, so I'll delete that. You may also require a full name block. Let's say I wanted to add another name up here. For the sake of the argument, maybe I had two people here. And say I've just Matt on this acknowledgement. Uh, what I'd have to do here, if I wanted to change it from Matt to somebody else, I could just change it based on whoops, the floating icon here. Right? Let's see how it is acknowledging this too. I know I'm not, so I'll just delete this. That's how you add someone's name in there as well. One really important thing that you'll need to use probably fairly often is actually the text field block. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time going over what that is and how that works. So I intentionally left one field blank here, and that was on the revocability. So let's say you made a mistake, but you want to add something in later. Click on the text field, and you can put it in to that space where you want to put something. We'll make this irrevocable by the buyer. So I'm going to quickly change this to Matt, just to illustrate this example. So if I just sent this right now for signature, when Matt comes in here, he's going to have the option to change this text. We don't want them to do that. So what you do, if, if you just want to put in some read-only text, which means they can't edit it, is you click on the little read-only bit checkbox on the left. That'll turn it gray. You notice it's disconnected it from any signing group or signer. So now this is an uneditable field. So that's exactly what I want here, right? So there we go. Now it just says buyer. You can do that. You can some another place you may want to use that is maybe like if you're adding a clause or something. Let's say we're adding something to a schedule. You can put in a text field here. Nice big one. Whoops. A nice big one. You had like a lot of text you want to put in here. And then you just again make sure you click it as to read only so that it changes it so no one can edit it. Okay. That's the really important thing to remember there. The other thing I'm sure a lot of you will want to use is a strikeout tool. So let's say we want to take out the financing condition. Click on the strike tool. You just draw, click and drag where you want the strike to be. You can change the color from black to red if you so choose. And if you messed it up, you can change where the ends are. You can move around the strikeout. Okay. I'm going to put an initial block. Make sure we're back to defaulting to matte. 
right here. I'll put in a couple more initial blocks, but I'm not gonna do it all because I'm sure you'll get the idea. And then maybe I'll just put, see if I can find a quick seller one just to show you again how to put a signature in. Click it there, you can resize it, and I'll put in a date. Okay. And again, this isn't a seminar on filling in an API, so I'm not gonna put everything in. But the next thing you're gonna do, once you get to this point, it's ready to send it off for signature. So what I will do is I'll hit the send button. It reminds me, oh, hey, what email do you want to do, use? Uh, email subject. And again, this is the name of the envelope, so make sure you put in something descriptive, probably with a property address and change the email message you want. And as soon as you're ready to go, you hit send for signatures. And it will send an email, which I'll show you shortly, to Matt as well as me. If you are on the signing, you can actually sign it right away and go through the process of putting your signatures in, or you can just click on I'm done. Okay. I'm gonna click the I'm done for now, and then I'm gonna open up the email to show you what the email looks like that you'd send to Matt. Okay, I just jumped into my email. This is what your client will get. It's SkySlope DigiSign branded, it says that you know Linus Kelly has request your signature. Hi Matt, your documents are ready for you and sign. You'll notice that the subject line is the one we put in before. And if you changed your message, that's where it would go in there. This is a pretty simple process. The signatory will just click on get started. You agree to accept the terms of using e-signatures. And then this is very similar to any other digital signing platform. You just click on the start button. You can click on the next or in the signatory block. It'll ask you when you're doing your first one, choose your style, or you can draw your signature and initials. I'll just choose one here for Matt. Click on use a signature. And then it will bring you through all the fields. You need to click right there on all the signatory blocks going through. And there's a nice little progress thing at the bottom here saying I've got another three to do. Boop, 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 all done. Click on finish signing. There you go, good job, Matt. You finish signing everything. You can download the documents as they are now, or you can view them. It will also send Matt uh, an email once everything's done with a copy of all the documents. Okay, so just jumping back into DigiSign, you'll notice here, hey, it says, here's the envelope I just created. My signature is still required. You have some options here as well. You can sign the envelope, you can correct it which means you can go back in, into the envelope, maybe add some more signature blocks. It will cancel anyone who tries to sign it. If you've already sent out emails, they won't be able to sign it because the envelope has been considered null and void. You can send a reminder to anyone who still needs to sign. You can download the envelope. You can download the certificates, the digital certificate to prove the signatory where it happened and when. You can also view the history or you can cancel the envelope. I'm going to go into the view history, but I'm also going to jump ahead into the future a little bit, so bear with me. Okay, through the magic of editing, everyone is finished signing. You've noticed that up here it says completed on. It tells you the date and time it was completed. I've signed, Matt signed. It tells you all the history of the envelope as well. It tells when they, people viewed it, when they signed it, et cetera, et cetera. Nice, good audit log here. You can download their digital certificate. You can download all the documents in the envelope. So going back in, you'll notice that this has changed to completed. Great. The options here have changed and more to download certificate, download envelope, view history. You can no longer cancel it because it's all done and signed. One thing you cannot do is rename the envelope. So again, that's why I want to stress the importance of naming it the it properly to begin with. And again, that's just by editing the sub email subject line. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have a ton of these. You have documents to sign. You don't want them all to be like that. You want to make sure you change the subject line. Right, so congratulations. You've now gone through the process of taking a document from web forms, throwing it into DigiSign, sending it out for signatures, and getting it back signed and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our video, please hit the like button, the subscribe, and even the little bell to get notifications, just so you can stay in touch and watch more of these great videos.